All of these games suck. Six-handed, we cheat seat five in favor of seat one. Seat five in favor of seat one. Our stack is going to be one three one three. Treatment, name your sex tape. Six handed, we're going to cheat seat two in favor of my confederate at seat five. That's my new favorite pickup line. Do you need oral treatment? Oh, wait, what's my math?
2, c3, c4, ace to my confederate, c5, c6, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1. No. Aces on bottom, our stack on top is just going to be 4 and 0. to my confederate at c5, c2, c3, c4, c5. C five, C six, C one, C two, C three, C four, C five, C six, C one. in favor of seat six. stack here. Seat 2, seat 3, seat 4, seat 5, seat 6. That was terrible. Seat 1, seat 2, seat 3, seat 4, seat 5, seat 6. That was better. Let's go to poker stacking. with the shift. Damn it. I thought I might not. <laughs> Thank you. 
Recky 04. Hello, Recky 04. How are you doing today? You want to see something cool? aces so we're gonna do something called twisting the aces here the goal is to get the aces to flip over and show their backs like this without physically turning them over so if we start with everything face up not gonna do anything weird there's one face down three face up one face down there's one now we're at two two face up two face down now we're at three so this last one, we're going to do something a little different. There it is. You can see it very clearly. You can see it face up. And now they're all face down. At least they're all face down until I turn this one face up. And now they're all face up. Here, do you want to do some magic? You feeling pretty magical? Give you the chance to do some magic. Let's take this card. Eight of diamonds, doesn't matter that I know what it is. Somewhere in there. Now you you know the card's about somewhere in the middle, right? The eight of diamonds, I think. This should destroy any uh, idea you have of where the card should be, but that's okay, because I want you to go on instinct here, all right? So I think there's about a 12 second delay. So I'm gonna say go, then I'm gonna wait about 12 seconds, I'm gonna start dealing cards to the table. Whenever I see the word stop in the chat, I'm gonna stop, right? Go. One Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, four Mississippi, five Mississippi, six Mississippi, seven Mississippi, eight Mississippi, nine Mississippi, 10 Mississippi, 11 Mississippi, 12 Mississippi, here we go. Okay, I'm going to stop when I see the word go. So, had I seen go any later, would have been one of those. Had been any earlier, would have been one of those. But right where I saw go, you managed to get me on the eight of diamonds. Oh, I should have gone when I see the word go, because yeah, that would have put us in the same spot. Okay, we can try that. I'm down for that. Let's see, it's... Uh, Go with that one. Ten of diamonds. Woo! Very clearly into the middle. There we go. All right, when I see the word go, I'll start. towards the bottom, <laughs> right there, and there's the 10. I'm going to see something really cool. So I got the whole deck here, and you can see it. Here I have one blank card. Nothing special about it, just one card, it's blank. If I put the blank card there and I snap, now the whole deck's blank. But don't worry, I can fix it. Like, nothing in my hand. If I take just give a little rub here, I can bring back every single face in the deck. Well, here, try this one. So every card in the deck, 
I want you to name any card. I'll follow you on IG there. Oh, thank you very much. That's sweet of you. Nine of hearts? Aw, I like how you even had the heart there. Nine of hearts. All right, so this trick has to do with time travel. So what I'd like you to do is so I'd like you to take a picture in your mind of this moment. This is what we're going to come back to, okay? With the nine of hearts face up in the middle. There's your nine in the middle. Now what I'm about to do may seem a little odd here and that I'm going to shuffle face up cards into face down cards. If this makes you anxious, I'm sorry, I can only promise that it makes me more anxious. And that will leave us with cards at various positions throughout the entire deck. So here's where we go back in time. You ready? There it was. You may not believe me, but look. Here we are back at square one with your card, the Nine of Hearts, face up. See if I can pull this one off. There's a seven of diamonds there on top. King of diamonds in the middle. Watch. Now we have a king on top, seven in the middle. Ah, oh, thanks. I'm just hoping it helped make your day. If it made you happy, mission accomplished. Here, let me do a gambling demo. Thanks for swinging by, by the way. I appreciate that. There's our aces. I'm going to put the aces in face up. Now, the reason the aces are going in face up is because this is a demo. This is a scenario where I want you to see me cheat. Let's go into the middle. So let's say, let's see how many hands we have. Three. So three opponents, courtesy of the dice. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two. Oh, I missed one. Damn. Three. I'm going to try this. That one goes into the middle. One, two, three. There we go. Demo something else. So let's say that ace of spades is on top, and I know him, and I know the ace of spades is on top. Now if I'm dealing, obviously I don't want to give you the ace of spades, I want to keep the ace of spades for myself. So I need some way by which I can deal you the top card and keep it for myself. That is called second dealing. Rather than dealing you the top card, I'm dealing you the second card. I've been doing about three years, a little over three years, but I do practice a lot. If I'm doing second dealing in a game, uh, so when I'm cheating, check that if I were to ever cheat, <laughs> that's what your second deal looks like. If the card's face down, you never have any idea. Push-offs are too difficult. They are, honestly, push-offs are kind of just a show-off thing. The strike, the strike works for everything. Like if I'm in a game, if I'm cheating, or if I'm doing a gambling demo, I actually don't cheat. But if I'm doing a gambling demo, push-offs are, or not push-offs, strikes are fine. 
The only time I ever use strikes or push-offs is if I need to do a super quick double lift. Then I'll do a push-off. Uh, just because you know, they are riskier than pinky counts. Have I ever demonstrated riffle stacking for Ureki? Familiar with Hold'em, Recky? Yes, okay. So how many how many players in our hypothetical game? You can you can choose the table. in total, right? So if the dealer is seat one, to my left is seat two, seat three, and seat four. Who gets the kings? Second player. All right. I'll do it with the king's face up so you can see. Let me do my math real quick. 2020, Goofed my past, damn. Well, let's try that again. Player cut. There we go. C2, C3, C4, C1, C2, C3, C4, C1. The kings go to C2, the aces go to me. Stacking for a bottom deal. The math here, I think, is just two zero. What a, whatever fake cut you want to do. That was actually pretty crap. We'll try it again. So C2, C3, C4, we bottom deal the ace. C2, C3, C4, we bottom deal the ace. So that is riffle stacking. I'll do it both face up. So this is what's called hot stacking. Cold stacking is pretty random, so I don't like doing it. Hot stacking is when you see what uh, cards hit the table before you deal, and you take the ones you want and put them on top. So in this case, let's say it's two kings, two aces. So the drill I do, I roll the dice. This tells me we're four-handed, again. And we will see, cheat seat three in favor of seat one. Actually, we can do it this way. We'll cheat seat three with my confederate at seat four. So my stack here is zero, two, zero, one. Okay. 
So the first step is your prep shuffle. You strip the king off, and that gets the cards in dealing order. Then you just do your stack. So there's my stack. If I were to deal the cards out now, they'd go where I want them. But that's only three shuffles, so we need to do a fake shuffle, fake cut. So that's all fake. Um, until recently, this is how I would beat the player cut. I get it over here. Herman passed the cards. So C2, C3, C4, C1, C2, C3, C4, C1. And there's your stack. You ever seen a fake shuffle? fake shuffles. I take it you've seen the rail change then. Oh, I love color changes. So you say push-offs are too difficult for you, so I take it you're a card magician of some sort. Here, let me open up my uh, spreadsheet. And I'll start going through color changes. If you see one you like, tell me and I'll teach it to you. Actually, that second one I did, that was the Bertram change. It's not terribly hard. Yes, real change, but no flashes. So, do you know this one, the Bertram change? Oh, that was flashed. There we go. I love the real change. It's so good. to Bertram, okay? Let's see what we got here. Okay, visual instant change. I actually do this one live a fair amount. That's the visual instant change. Cardini change, I'm sure you know. Oh god, Catalyst is such a bitch. I'll see if I can do it. Let's try that again. Kinda. Uh, lateral change. I actually do use the lateral change live a fair amount. That's actually not that hard. Let's see. Stiletto change, which is hard to do at this angle. Looks like that. Uh, instant replay. Look, looks like that. That's kind of sloppy. We'll try that again. There we go. Let's see. Wave change. Looks like that. The one before lateral. Catalyst. 
which it's hard, it's angly, but it, it's a good one for social media. I see it done there every now and again. Like that. change. Let's see, it did the wave change. Uh, the swivel change. Not a big fan of it because you got to do that. Oh, good. The two of diamonds to the two of hearts. Best color change in history. There we go. Nah. Uh, here, I'll show you. So obviously you get your double anytime there's a color change, you're either peeling a card off or putting a card on. So as you come in here to sw to swivel the card this way, you're breaking the double as your hand covers, and you're taking this card in pinky clip but along the long edge. And the fact that you're uh, rotating the card helps cover it. Open up, this slides in here, the thumb goes to the top corner, and as your hand moves, it squares. So it's speed, it looks like that. Exposed. Yeah, that's one you don't want to do live. That's one you do for Instagram. It looks great on Instagram. Uh, let's see. Uh, clip shift, which is awesome, but it's a bitch to learn. Classic color change. Let's see. Uh, okay, so you know Erdnays probably. So did you know Erdnays comes from Expert at the Card Table, and we know it by, by the name the Erdnays change, but there are actually four changes uh, in that part of the book. Uh, Erdnays V1, V2, V3, V4. The other three just hardly ever get used. So uh, we know V1 is the classic Erdnays change. However, this is Erdnays V2, which I think is better. Uh, Face-up startler, startler, you almost certainly know. Although everyone calls it the paintbrush change, it's not. It's the Marlowe Face-up Startler, which looks like that. The paintbrush change is actually this. And I forget. I don't. I forget who came up with it. That's the paintbrush change. Actually, the reason it's called the paintbrush change, I do it uh, not the way it's taught. Um, so it's supposed to look like this, like you come down and then paint shift. So with people doing the clip shift, there is. Um, I think there's better color changes. However, I think it does have utility as a control. So they call stop wherever they want. They get the three of hearts there. Don't forget it. And then you've got it on top. I think there is a lot of utility for it there. Being able to control the card out of the middle directly to the top without altering the rest of the deck has a lot of utility. For instance, let's say I take the blank card, I drop it on top. We're going to come back to that blank card in a second. I have them call stop wherever they want. I'm just kind of jamming at this point. They call stop for the king of spades. Don't forget it. Oh, people, yeah, that's true. People don't learn. All right. So look, there's that blank card we had before. Look, if I just take my hand, I can rub like this and get that blank card to turn into the king. Um, yeah, it took me a month to learn the clip shift, not going to lie, and I had I lost five days of practice there just because my knuckles were so sore, because you've got to build flexibility to get the card up into that position. So, like, yeah, like, look how high my pinky is to do it right. 
Um, yeah, but I don't regret learning. I've gotten, I, I have gotten some use out of it. You'll hear people say, you know, it's too much work for too little payoff. And it might be, but it's far from a useless move. Oh God, I love the clip shift, yeah. And it's a magician fooler if they don't know what the clip shift is because they have no idea how you got that card in position. Okay, Erdnay's two, face up startler. Ah, uh, the looking glass change. That's actually my girlfriend's favorite. So, Ace of Hearts there in the middle, and then we have the King of Spades there on the face. Watch. That's the looking glass change. Again, one for the instas. Oh, the pinky clip change. Now, I have gotten a lot of use out of this. It's just really concise. I love it. Oh man, the silky change. Um, man, this is a Justin Miller thing. I don't know if this is mine to teach, but if you won't tell, I won't tell. Take the top card, the nine. Then we have the ace. Give the ace a little rub like this. And one more rub, and that changes it into the eight. Things I've learned, a lot of applications. Oh man, if you've learned the clip shift, then you, you're surely far from uh, far from a beginner then. Clip shift's hard as hell. Uh see. You know the classic color change, you know the snap change. Instant replay. One-handed top palm change, which if you can do a clip shift is kinda useless. Although I've gotten I've gotten use out of the one-handed top palm change. Suriano change can be a magician fooler. Just because you can make it obvious that you don't have the double. That's kind of sloppy. I don't practice the Suriano change. Oh, the Marlowe Miracle change. I do love this move. Which no one seems to know what the name of this is. I see a few magicians do it. That's the Marlowe Miracle change, classic pass change. Yes, 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 yes. Oh, here's something I came up with, which I'm sure someone else has thought of this. There's no way this is entirely mine. So you show the seven. Seven goes to the table. Now it's a two. It's kind of like a poor man's way of doing a top change. Speaking of the top change, there's the two. I'm mo yes. Hey, move monkeys unite. Uh, what else we got here? Zozo change. I yeah, I practiced for a while trying to come up with a way to do a three card Zozo change. We'll see if I can do it here. I haven't done it in forever. So boom, nope. Boom, 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 boom. There we go. There we are. I only found one ever, aside from Instagram, one real use for the Zozo change. <laughs> Rail change, you know. Winter change. Um, I'm sure you're familiar with the shape shifter. Oh, I don't want to do the one-handed fan change. Um, so if you don't if you don't want to do the Bertram change, you can kind of do uh, this one. Just kind of that one's fun. Have I shown you the, the hardest trick I ever came up with, my ungimmicked version of Everywhere and Nowhere?
I followed you on Instagram. That's fine. Um, have I ever shown you my ungimmicked version of Everywhere and Nowhere? Oh, you weren't following me. Oh, wow. Is this your first time here? Sorry, I didn't see a follow or a, a notice that this is your first time. So I was assuming you'd been here before. have you around. Uh, if you ever want to come on and practice or want some help with any of your moves, join the Discord. Uh, I'll occasionally have people on here to jam with during the practice stream or whatnot. But also happy to help people develop moves and whatnot. Anyway, would you like to see my ungimmicked version of Everywhere and Nowhere? It's one of my favorite things I've ever come up with. So when I do this live, I let the spectator shuffle. So you're just going to have to trust me for the time being that these are legitimate shuffles. <laughs> I'm not cheating yet. Alright, so spectator gets to shuffle. And I follow by asking, are you content that I can have no control over the order of the cards at this time? Assuming the shuffles were legitimate. I'm going to assume you say yes, because I can't. So from the deck you shuffled, I'm going to make a prediction about something. One of these two. Let's see here. Uh, it's a spectator, what's your favorite food? Let's say they say pizza. So we're going to go with this one. There's our prediction. We're locked in. Put a dice on top so I can't mess with it. All right. So let's do it this way. When I see the word go, I'm going to start running my finger down the side of the deck like this. All right. Wherever I see the word stop from you, that's the card we're going to take. So go and stop. And I will run my thumb very slowly so you can be content that I'm not trying to stop you at a certain spot. Right there. So in this particular case, you get the... 10 of spades. I would not ordinarily know that. So we're going to do the exact same thing. I'm going to I'm going to call uh, when I see the word go, I'm going to start running my thumb. I'm going to do it slowly. Wherever I see stop, that's where we're going to put the card. And I can actually know what cards you got at this point. Now, while I'm turning the fan on, I will ask, will you concede that I ran my thumb slowly both times? Had I seen the word stop earlier, it would have been a different spot each time. Presuming that you say yes. I'm going to do this as fairly as I can. Hopefully you accept that that's pretty fair. So not only did you call stop on the ten of spades, you managed to put it next to the ten of diamonds, also next to the ten of hearts. And that prediction card I took out since before you even took a card, that so happens to be the ten of clubs. Now that trick is not mine, that's Alex Pandrea's. And if you'd like to know how to do it, holler and I'll tell you how. So I use that to get into my trick. So these, uh, let's actually change the angle here for this one. All right, so these tens that you found, 
these are going to act as kind of like my lovely assistants for this next part of the trick. But before they can do that, I have the spectator touch a card. You're not here, so let's just presume that you touched this one here. It's the Ace of Hearts. Now, ordinarily, I wouldn't know that, but in this particular case, it doesn't really matter. And then I ask the spectator to do one more thing for me, if they would, and that is to keep an eye on my cards. These are bicycle gold seals, which cost seven or eight bucks a deck. I don't like people getting their grubby fingers all over my cards. So here's what we do. We take our little collection of tens here, and these tens are going to whisper little hints to me about the identity of your card. Uh, so for instance, this ten here on top, this ten tells me that you looked at a red card. Is that right? This ten tells me that you looked at a heart. This 10 tells me that you looked at a face card, and this last 10 over here, this one tells me that you looked at an ace. So based on all this information, you're going to go out on a limb and say you looked at the ace of hearts. Sound about right? But look, now that I know what your card is, we don't need the 10s over here ratting you out. Uh, and you can see there's nothing but 10s over here in this pile. There is no ace of hearts. So let's try one more thing. I'm going to number the cards 1, 2, 3, and 4. 1, 2, 3, and 4. Whichever number you pick, and I'll set them down so you can see I won't change them. Whichever number you pick will turn into your card. Which number do you want? just for shits and grins. Let's take your ace, and we're going to put it face down amongst the tens. Now, why did I do that? I did it because I want to alter this little packet of reality here, in hopes of altering another. Now, we're missing the ten of clubs, which started out over here. And your card started out in the deck. But now your card is over here. You don't think that... And then if you want to get really bold, you can add a third step. Uh, this is not mine. Take the tens over here, get the ace there. I think I remember how this works. The ace goes to the table, leaves us with the tens over here. At least I think that's how it works. Wait, actually that's not how it works. I lied. It's the, uh, fuck. It's the tens on the table, poorly executed, and the ace over here. God damn, now I want to do that again. There's the tens, ace. So if you want to know how to do that first trick, I'll happily show you. Actually, if you want to know how to do my version of Everyone Nowhere, I'll show you. It's mine to teach. It is kind of tough, though. It's not the easiest thing in the world. In this scenario, I would use a top palm, like a one-handed top palm, Just like that. So if it's face up. No, no, I'll take the feedback. So when you say the, the top palm, you would use it for the transposition? Oh, okay, so rather than use the, the pinky clip to transfer them back, you would palm off all of them and take it to the table flat hand. Totally. 
to put the three cards. Okay. Hey, look, there's four tens on the bottom. Okay. So we're here. We have the four tens. Eight goes to the table. So we're here. So then you'd have to, okay. So then you get back. So then you get that, hold there, and then go to the table like that. Okay, that could work, yeah. Wait, how did I not get the steal? Wait a minute, hold on. Okay, hold on. <laughs> Whoops. We goofed. All right, so there's that. Did I get the wrong thumb break? <laughs> So there we are. Yeah, I can still get my, my thumb free. That's actually not a bad idea. Wait, why am... Now that's gonna bother me, hold on. All right, so we're here. Yes, 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 yes. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, so hold on. There's our Elmsley. So the card is on top. Oh, hold on. So, okay, so I've got the card on top here, so I can't palm off the three on top. I would have to, well, I could, hmm. So if I get that, okay, I can palm from underneath. That works. I could also lateral palm. Ooh, that actually looks pretty good. Ooh, I like the lateral palm there. Thoughts? What do you think? Okay, so let's say I've got the one thing there, I've got the eight on top. Okay, hold on, I don't need a spider finger it though. Oh, that looks way better. Yeah? Or count them to the right order? I'd have to put them in position and like, I don't know how I'd count to the face. That'd have to be a weird ass count. Hmm. Anyway, I will dick with that. Thank you for the idea of the the classic punks. I actually think I like lateral palm better there, and that led me to it. Oh, what else do we do? Oh, how can I join the Discord? Ah, oh, here, let me go grab the link, and I'll throw it in there. Dum 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 dum. -dum. Invite people, copy that. Wait, I actually can't chat unless I go to the Twitch? Okay, fine, we'll do that. You win, Twitch. I didn't want to chat anyway. There you go, friend. Uh, I stream every day from 11 to noon. Sometimes I do an extra, like I am now, which I think we're about to call this. My hands are getting a little tired. I practiced a lot today. But yeah, if you're ever free from 11 a.m. to noon and uh, you see me streaming and you want some help with a move or you just want to jam or whatever, shoot me a message on Twitch and I'll hop in there. Get you in. I've got a, I've got a scene set up to Discord jam with people. And every now and again, we just get big ass Discord jams going. We actually get some really good people in here from time to time. I've had a Cameron Braxton in here, Xavier Spade. Yeah, I think we're about to call this one. Recky, thanks for swinging by, man. I hope you got something out of it. I hope you enjoyed it. Hope to see you again.
That's it. Yay. All right, well, I'll catch you next time, man. Take care.